everyone and welcome back to Clever Patch Craftinoons. Happy holidays! I know this term's been a bit of a tough one, uh, lots of homeschooling happening out there across the country. So for today's craft I thought we could jump into a really fun and experimental craft known as Collagraph Printing. Now a Collagraph is created using a variety of collage materials that we stick down to a surface to create a printing plate. Now today we're going to be experimenting with using lots of different textures to see what effects we can come up with with our prints. The great thing about collagraphs is they can be created using basically anything. So I'm going to be showing you with a few specific things today, but you can collect a bunch of things that you might have around your house and join in as well. Another great thing about collagraphs is they're so versatile. Um, you can create lots of different things with them. You can create multiples of things, which is great. Um, so think about how you want to use your collagraph. Are you creating an artwork for the wall or are you going to turn it into a Christmas card or an invitation? Are you going to work back into it? So for example, this is a plain collagraph print. But here's one, same print, but I've then just gone back in with some other materials to create this cool underwater scene. So the materials we're going to need today is some thick cardboard. So I'm using some pieces of an old box that we had lying around. Um, you might have something like a cereal box or something similar to use. I'm going to be using some foam sheets. Uh, some glue. I'm going to be using block printing inks for my printing today so I have a roller to roll those out. Uh, if you don't have block printing inks specifically that's okay. Again this is all about experimenting so use the paints that you have on hand and see what you come up with. You're going to need a pencil, a pair of scissors, your paper for printing, as well as some scrap paper for when things get a little bit messy. Alright, I think that's it. Let's jump into it. So let's create our uh, collagraph plate. As I mentioned, I'm beginning with just a piece of old box. And what you want to do first is think about the design that you want to create. Today I will be showing you by creating a very simple bird design. This is a nice profile bird inspired by those peak chroma birds you see out there. And all I've done is popped my plate onto a page, traced around it so I know what size I'm working with, and then sketched out a simple design to fill the plate space. Thinking about uh, the positive and negative spaces that I'm going to be creating as I draw my image. Once you have your image designed, it's simply a matter of cutting out your pieces and then using those pieces to cut out different collage materials to then assemble the design on top of your plate. So that's the design and I used that to cut out these simple pieces of collage material. As you can see there I'm using another piece of box but this one I've peeled that top layer off to reveal the nice corrugated cardboard underneath which will give a lovely texture. And then the rest I've just cut out of soft foam. So nice and simple, three pieces to create a bird. And all we do is glue those to our printing plate once we're happy with our design. And then what I'm going to show you how to do is create some extra texture to your designs using simply glue. So you might have different things at home to help you create texture when gluing things to your plate. So instead of using cardboard and foam, 
You might have things like string which you could ball up and use or maybe you have some bubble wrap left over from a package. Those things create some really nice textures. With the foam being so smooth and flat, I'd really like to add a bit of detail to the bird here. So as you can see from my drawing, I have this nice eye little patch over the top. So what I going, I'm going to do there is create a nice little bit of texture around the eye. In fact, if I did this again, I would probably cut out that eye so it would be a negative space. But anyway, for now I'll just show you how to create some texture using glue. So to do that, I'm going to fill this patch area around the eye with glue. Now I like to use tacky glue because it holds its form more so it's not running around all over the place and you have a bit more control. So once I have this patch of glue down, I'm going to use a skewer. I'm just going to scratch into that glue. Just give it a bit of a wipe between scratches. And you can see by scratching it away, that purple of the foam is coming through again. And we're creating this crisscross pattern. And that's going to give a nice texture once it's dry. Another thing that I want to do to add a bit of detail to my design is I want there to be a nice line running through his beak and then also I want to add in a small feather detail to his chest. So again it's very easy to do this with glue. Just carefully get the glue running you don't want it running out too quickly either draw in the beak line And then the feather line there. So once you've created some added texture to your plate, you need to allow your plate to dry completely. Once your plate has dried, here's one that I made earlier. You're going to see that the glue is now clear, but it has created this nice raised line and here in the crisscrossed pattern that we made it's a really lovely texture as you run your hands over it and now my first plate is ready for printing now if you wanted to do a two plate design so this, for example, is a two plate design. I've got the background plate, which was created same technique using just some soft foam. And then I've created, created some texture using glue over the top. So that's the background plate. And then I've got these cute little insects here on a second plate which you then print over the top. 
So have a think about do you want a background for your design or are you just going to keep it simple? For example, like the jellyfish plate that I also created. Just a simple print. Once you've decided what you're going to print, it's time to get your inks ready. So I'm going to be using the block printing inks today to print my Collagraph plate. And I'm going to use a combination of red and yellow to get a nice gradient through color wise. So all I do, I've just taped down a piece of plastic to my table. I find plastic is much nicer to roll out on. The ink doesn't soak into it and it's just a nice easy clean up afterwards. So I'm just popping a little bit of ink out onto the plastic. You don't need a lot of ink when printing so it's always best to pop a little bit out at a time so you reduce your waste. I'm just going to take the roller and roll into the ink and then away. So just kissing the ink and bringing it back down. Pulling that ink down and rolling it out. You'll see the ink is nice and sticky. We're just going to continue rolling backwards and forwards until it's nice and even and you've created this lovely gradient from yellow to red. You'll see the surface of the ink is nice and sticky. You'll see a little pattern. Once your roller is completely inked, take it to your Collagraph plate and we just want to roll over the surface. Oop. This is why we have scrap paper down as this part can get quite messy. Might also be handy to use gloves. We want to just keep rolling over the surface of our design until it's nice and covered. We want all of those pieces to have some ink on them. So it will print onto our paper. Now if you're using acrylic inks at home, Again, it is always great to have a roller on hand for printing as you get that nice even coat across the surface. But if you don't have that, you can just use a paintbrush to ink up your Collagraph plate. Now once your plate is nice and covered, you can see that shine of ink on the surface. It's time to print. But what you do want to note is these extra bits that have come onto the surface of your plate. Now, I don't want those to print. So I'm just going to, if I had paper towel, I could cover those up. I've just got some scraps here. I'm just going to soak up some of that ink to avoid it printing onto my paper. So just rub it away. Alternatively, you could take some paper and cover it up, which would also work. Just to make sure your print is nice and clean and we only see that design. 
Okay, so to print your design, you want to take a nice clean sheet of paper and we just position our print in the center and we just use our fist or the palm of our hand to press firmly into the paper. So you want to spend some time really making sure that that ink is transferring to the paper below. And once you're happy, just lift up your Collagraph plate to reveal your print below. Now as you can see, there's a bit of ink missing here. So the next print I do, I would spend a bit more time really pressing that Collagraph plate into the paper. But I still think that's a really lovely effect. And that's the thing with Collagraph printing as well. You could print this same plate a hundred times and you would get a hundred different versions of your print. Once you're finished with your print, you can then let it dry. You could cut it out. You can work back into it using different mediums uh, or you could even frame it up to use as a gift or to hang on your wall to brighten up your room. And that is Collagraph Printing. Well, I hope you've had a great time learning about Collagraph Printing. I know I've had a really fun time making them. The thing to remember with your Collagraph prints is there is no wrong or right. Uh, just make sure you keep experimenting. If your print doesn't work first time, then try again. The great thing about these Collagraph plates is they're reusable. So once you're done with your printing, just let that paint dry. Obviously we can't wash them because the material is mostly cardboard. Uh, but just let that paint dry and you can use it again in the future. If you've tried our Collagraph activity, make sure you hit us up on our socials or shoot us an email. We would love to see what you have made out there. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy those holidays and until next time, happy crafting!